What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Decipher, if you didn't know that already, I don't know how you found me. <laughs> Anyways, today we're starting off a new series uh, I'm calling Mixing and Mastering with Decipher. And this is going to be, basically, um, we're going to go through different genres and I'm going to show you how I mix and master each one and get them ready for, you know, Spotify or BeatStars or wherever they're going to go. Um, so... Without further ado, let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you guys do all that fun little yummy YouTube stuff and click the like button, the subscribe, the bell, all that nice stuff. Um, just all the algorithmic crap. <laughs> Alright, so what we've got here is uh, I've got this track that I've been working on. It's a, a 21 Savage Metro Boomin' type beat. And I actually did this by creating the whole beat around the No Heart acapella, which is something that uh, my buddy Eldre turned me on to. He's an acapellist to build your beat. Now, because of YouTube, I obviously can't play the lyrics or the acapella. So we're going to work with the beat here. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do my mixing and mastering for hip-hop beats, how I break them down, everything like that. And yeah, so let's get into this. Let's go ahead and start off by playing the beat. So there's an idea of what the beat sounds like. Now we're going to go in and start mixing. We're going to start right here. I don't like to solo anything. Soloing. Oh, shit. Sure. Now we're going to go ahead and go in and start mixing this. Uh, first thing is I don't solo anything when I work. I don't like to solo because things have to sound right in the mix. They gotta sound right together. So like you'll see I'm pushing stuff. solo just these two so that I can work on them. And then we're going to put an EQ on this. Find the hidden frequencies to work with here. Fire down some so that it's kind of in the background as like an effect over anything else. We're going to hit this with a soft clipper. driver here just for some difference in tone just to kind of 
there, give it that grimy flavor. You know, that old school UK grime flavor by adding a little distortion on the uh, strings there. Put a little whiteness in them here. This is something I want to take a second and talk about. When you are panning, okay, this is something I learned from from watching Butch Big do this for so long. Um, I'm a huge, I'm a huge, huge fan of garbage and Butch Big. Um, Butch Big uses a very old school style, uh, like wall of sound type style. And the thing is, is that when you do that, you have to have everything in an exact specific place. Every single little thing has to be in a specific place. You don't want things in in the same place because they'll blend. Now, you can take and say put the strings 12% left and then move your string and move your, you know, your hi-hats over to 12% right because it's going to create that differential in sound. What you don't want to do is put your strings in the 12% left and your choir in the 12% left because then those two things are going to blend too much together and the wall of sounds eliminated. So you'll see that what I'm going to do is I'm actually taking and putting my strings in like a 10 to the right and I'm going to put my choirs at like an 8 on the left. And that creates a little width in them. Pull this just a bit to the left hand side, like maybe 16. Touch it down just a, a hair here. Let's get the sounds coming back in. Put that perk there. Now generally when I do my hats, because I use two different hats, um, there's two different ways I go about this. One of them being is that you can take and move your hats to the left hand side. Um, which is how I prefer to do mine. I put my hats on the left because most of the drummers I've ever known in my life sit like this. This is their hat on their left hand side. Conversely, I know that when fans and music listeners sit and listen to a song or see a band live they actually hear it this direction where the hats are on the right so a lot of producers put their hats on the right to recreate that sound of listening versus creating i tend to put mine on the left just because that's where i remember hats being so it's really a personal preference. That's kind of the whole great thing about this is it's it's all your own song. So if you want to put your hats on the right side, you can. And that's the whole thing too is that you can layer things on top of each other if for whatever reason you think it sounds good. I just don't. It's my own personal preference. I just don't think it sounds good when you have strings and choir both sitting right here because, well, how do you know where, you know, the back one is? But say if, it was off another even one percent they've got separation between them you can see where they both are it's just a, it's a personal preference thing though you can totally do it either way so like i said i'm putting my hats to the left now occasionally what i'll do is if i use two hats sometimes i will take and put one to the left and one slightly on the right hand side so let me see how can we go about doing that let's put this at like 
right there, 6%, and see what that's like. See how that kind of creates that little, little pan split? My kicks I always keep centered. Snares you can do pretty much anything with. They can stay centered, they can go to the right, they can go to the left, it doesn't matter. That's another thing I feel like I should point out. Now, if you have sounds like that, where you've seen that I'm like kind of breaking my own rule by doing two things in the same spot, you'll notice that the reason I do that is because sometimes, like this, this hat right here that I'm, I'm tweaking on, okay, so I dropped it in a 13% to the right. Well, there's already other things in 13% to the right. But because this sound doesn't affect those those are other things other perks and hats and snares and things this sounds not going to affect that you can move them here and it, it still works it's not going to bury anything that way um. I'm moving potentially dead tracks because I end up with a lot of dead tracks from where I'm like trying out different things and just doing this and doing that on the fly and I don't want to stop and mess with them I'll just move any potentially dead tracks over um, to the end of my effects rack and that just that keeps them separated that way if for some reason I start hearing drum sounds that I can't find I know where they are I don't have to search for them but if they don't get used, they're real easy to get rid of then. Um. Jump us back to where we were here. some of those tracks turn back up and get used.
Okay, so now we're going to set up buses. Buses are probably one of the most important things I use. Um, and I owe this one to Chrysler Algae uh, CLA because, man, he taught me a lot about using buses from watching his stuff. Um, buses are great places to affect a whole lot of sounds in one very convenient place. I might have to make my mixer longer to get them all. Yep, I'm going to. Okay. So when you set up a bus, you want to go through and you want to route everything you're linking to that bus to that one track only, to the bus. Um, and that is so that you can affect everything at once. Really all that's about. I linked that one to the wrong thing. That's okay, we'll fix that real quick. Okay. And this can take a minute, which is why I definitely suggest that you be smarter than I am and save yourself a template so that you're not doing this all the time. Um, just something I really need to do is save a template of this, but I'm not going to bother with it today. Which means I'll probably go another week or two before I actually do it. <laughs> How many more drums do I have? Okay, that's my last one. Meet. Alright, and slide it. There we go. Uh, route to this track only. And then we're going to come over here to the bus. And we're going to rename it. To Drum Bus. And there we go. Uh, I tend to make my buses really bright so they stand out a lot. Um, just because that's honestly the best way to go about that. I'm going to go ahead and route this one in, even though I don't know if it's actually anything on it or not. And then let's route the effects to their bus. And I'll show you the benefits of a bus here in just a second. All right. So now the benefits of a bus are that you're now affecting everything at once. Which means once you have everything leveled, you can then affect everything at one time with this bus. Now, I tend to use my bus a lot of times for doing things like, uh, oh, yeah, let's get this right here, the CLA Echo Sphere, which if you guys didn't get that on Black Friday, I feel bad for you because, wowee, does this thing make me want to buy the Epic... <laughs> But, uh, all right. This is a nice little slap and reverb here. Uh, we're probably going to try... Let's try the short slap room. Pull this all the way off. Bring a bit of delay in. Bring that delay down just a little bit. And then bring some reverb up on it. And just like that, our drums already sound a whole lot more alive. And then I'll come over here and I'll throw this fresh air on from Slate Digital. We just got this lovely little preset in it for a hat lifter. Or we can go with Presence Pop. I 
I'm actually going to use the clap lifter on that one. Let's bring a little bit of this delay out. There we go. That way it's a shorter, faster time. And in case you guys are curious, the short slap room is basically CLA's go-to drum sound. Um, let's start working this now. And I know everybody's going to freak out like, oh my god, what's with the pushed up snare there? Well, that is a RZA thing. RZA from the Wu-Tang used to crush his snares way up there. And man, I gotta tell you, like, Savage and Boomin do it a lot. And it, it definitely makes a difference. And you can affect everything later with the drum bus and with limiting and everything so that it's not like clipping. And really, what's wrong with clipping? If it sounds good when it clips, then let it clip. <laughs> seeing me do now is where I'm going through and leveling everything. Just getting everything to sound nice and tight. I'm going to pull this snare back just a touch. Oh, same here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
this is a pretty old uh, trick from the 60s and 70s that like Hendrix and stuff used to use. Um, but you'd actually be surprised how often it gets used now. Like even Jack Antonoff, who does a lot of the biggest pop records today, uh, he uses this trick a lot where he'll run flangers on his drums. And thankfully, Fruities gave us one, or FL gave us one that's uh, the Fruity Flanges. It's got a, a setting for drums, so it'll. What it does is it basically glues it all together, makes it sound real nice. Like, let me turn it off and I'll show you. Off. Everything's kind of. It brings it in. You'll also notice another thing that I do a lot of is I um, I have changed these away from waveforms to bars and the reason is, is because you get two lines and then your top and it's more like a professional studio where you get the, the bouncing bars. So. <laughs> Sometimes if I want a little more punch, I'll throw a soft clipper on my drum bus. Soft clipper here. can see when it comes to me doing hip-hop beats I mean there's not a lot of production that goes into these a lot of it is just leveling and spacing a little EQing all right so as you can see I don't do a whole lot when it comes to hip-hop beats like a lot of it is just leveling um, getting everything to sound right 
all the little simple things. And then if you think that's simple, man, my mastering is so much simpler. I learned this trick off of uh, the guys at Internet Money. And this has pretty much become my way to master beats. So let's go ahead and get into this and I'll show you how I master it and then we'll get out of here and that'll be it. We start by using an EQ. First EQ always does the same thing. The one goes all the way to the left and down, seven goes all the way to the right and up. That opens up all your frequencies. Second one, you're gonna come in here, you're gonna look for hidden frequencies. Boost them just a bit. Take that one back over, cut it off, do the same thing with the seven. Bring it to the right, bring it up. Cut some of those enlarged frequencies. All right. Now we're moving into a limiter. Turn off the attack, the release, and the sustain. Turn them all the way down. Grab your gain. Pull it down, not too much. You just want to chop the tips of like your lowest, highest notes, if that makes sense. Chop those tips. Come back, grab a multi compressor. Boom, multi band compressor. Go to your mastering preset 2.4. Boom, make sure you use the 2.4. Don't over push it, but push things till you start to see a little compression on everything. And the last thing I do on occasion, depending on the beat, is sometimes I'll come in here, I'll grab a sound goodizer and very lightly throw it on. There you have it that is how i mix master and set my beats up to go off to beat stars spotify apple all that stuff you guys can find my music on apple spotify everything you can lease beats including this beat on beat stars at beatstars.com slash decipher which i'll link below uh my instagram page has always got stuff going on on it i'll link that below too so you guys can get over there that's where you'll find all my pre-saves for my music any links to music, um, any links to guitar lessons, video covers, anything of that sort. Also, on my BeatStars page, I have just started a new uh, service where I am doing guitar lessons now through Zoom. been a guitar player for over a decade uh, in several different bands across the country. And I am now offering guitar lessons at a super reasonable price on Zoom. Go check that out. And... Starting next week, which is Monday the 14th, you guys can use my name as a code and you'll get 50% off those guitar lessons. So, all right guys, I'm Decipher. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click that little bell, the like, and subscribe button for me. It means a whole lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one.